In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I come to you from Good Samaritan Episcopal Church in San Diego, named after one of Jesus' most famous characters, a foreigner who had the heart and the courage to serve a traveler whom he found injured and in need at the side of the road. I don't have to tell you that there are many travelers in need of help these days, especially at the southern border of the United States. If I got into my car and drove a half hour south of here, I would come to the San Isidro border crossing into Mexico and could visit the lively border city of Tijuana. It's only a half hour away, but sometimes it seems a world apart, especially in these days of COVID and political disagreement when crossing borders, geographic borders, language borders, political borders, borders of all kinds, is not so easy. Across that geographic border, all along the U.S.-Mexico frontier, wait tens of thousands of people who have fled their homes for a hoped-for better life in the United States. Travelers who find themselves in need of help. International law requires the U.S. to offer asylum to those who flee their homes for fear of political, racial, ethnic, or religious persecution. But admitting those who fear for their lives has slowed to a crawl because of political disagreements and because of COVID, which has closed the, the border for many people, with people waiting indefinitely for their court hearings. It brings to mind a portion of the poem titled Home by Warson Shire. I want to go home. But home is the mouth of a shark. Home is the barrel of the gun. And no one would leave home unless home chased you to the shore, unless home told you to quicken your legs, leave your clothes behind, crawl through the desert, wade through the oceans, drown, save, be hunger, beg, forget pride, your survival is more important. No one leaves home until home is a sweaty voice in your ear saying, leave, run away from me now. I don't know what I've become, but I know that anywhere is safer than here. End quote. So far away from the homes that they've left searching for safety, they wait. Some of those who wait live in crowded migrant camps where they are sometimes victimized by criminals. Many have trouble finding jobs while they wait. All are waiting in hope of better, safer lives. In the meantime, it's estimated that over 600 children who were detained and separated from their parents are still separated, with no idea how to, how to find their parents or reunite them with the people who love them. So we Christians wonder, what are we to do in this situation with these beloved children of God? How do we work within the boundaries of the two kinds of laws that we are subject to, the laws of our countries and the laws that we are given by God? Our scriptures tell us to love the stranger, for we were strangers once ourselves. In the U.S., almost all of us are descended from immigrants, those who came willingly and those who came against their will. So we can take this scripture literally. Immigrants follow a path that our ancestors once traveled. We were strangers once ourselves. In a deeper sense, more than literally, we know that we have been welcomed in God's kingdom, a kingdom where we must constantly learn how to live as citizens, but where our Christian faith constantly invites us to grow in love and to care for and welcome others in God's name. As citizens of God's kingdom, our primary law is to love God and love our neighbor. 
And Jesus reminds us in this famous lesson from Matthew 25, which Episcopalians will hear again on Sunday, if you have done it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you have done it to me. From the beginning of his life, Jesus was a wanderer. He was born in a stable far from home. He immediately fled into Egypt as a refugee from the power of King Herod. He said that he, like a fox, he had nowhere to, let, to make his home. He was a migrant and a refugee. In a very real sense, we can see his face in those like him who have fled their homes in search of safety and security. Jesus, from the beginning of his life to the end, was found not among the comfortable and powerful, but among the homeless and the hungry, the migrant and the poor. Tonight's gospel lesson says just that. If you have done it to the least of my siblings, you have done it to me. And this should come as no surprise to us. But maybe it does. Or maybe it causes not surprise so much as discomfort. The American writer Mark Twain said, it is not those parts of the Bible that I do not understand that bother me. <laughs> it's the parts of the Bible that I do understand that bother me the most. And maybe we know that we should love the stranger, our neighbor, we just don't know how. But if you look at this parable that Jesus tells of, about sheep and about goats, the interesting thing is that neither the sheep nor the goats are surprised by what Jesus says that they did. They know whether or not they've been feeding those who are hungry or visiting those who are in prison, whether or not they've been helping people who are in need. What surprises them is where they find Jesus. Because both of them, the sheep and the goats, both of them say, Lord, when did we see you and feed you? Or when did we see you and not feed you? They didn't know that God was to be found in those who suffer, those who are far away from home. No one expects to see God in a migrant camp or a children's detention center. We, we expect to see God in power and glory. In other words, neither the sheep nor the goats were thinking about Jesus or about God when they decided what to do about people in need. They simply did what came naturally to them. Which means the sheep who fed the hungry and visited those detained in prison were people who had simply developed habits of caring for others. This is who they are. They are full of love that God has poured into their hearts and they pour that love into others. This border summit, the third annual border summit, is designed to help Episcopalians and Anglicans on both sides of the border, the U.S.-Mexico border, discern God's call to us in a time of deep division, of borders and boundaries that we have created between factions of people, disagreement over the issues of people waiting at the border hoping for a better life. How are we called to love the people in whom Jesus is found? How are we called to bring healing in a time of pandemic? How are we called to be peacemakers when the country is mired in conflict? How do we begin to pray and think and act about these things? The summit is designed to help all of us learn and understand, and it is intended to help us share ideas and build relationships. My prayer is that as we pray and learn and dream together, that our churches may become places of shelter, places of prayer, places where love is put into action, so that those who suffer may help us open our eyes to where Jesus is, in the least, the lost, and those who are far away from home. Because Jesus says, it is in serving others, it is in loving others, it is in blessing others that we are blessed and see the face of God.